Hello again, uh, and welcome back to another installment of Time Tuesdays here at Avon Max. Uh, my name is Dave, and I will be teaching you guys how to tie uh, a stinger clouser minnow. It's a deadly pattern. Um, I mean, to be honest, I, I, I don't think there's a, a more famous uh, bait fish pattern out and about. People use it all over the place, from salmon to steelhead, trout, bass. Um, you can catch darn near anything on a chartreuse and white class of minnow. And personally, I like having a little stinger hook in there. It helps uh, a lot of the time when, you know, you got fish that are kind of trailing after a fly and, and nipping at it and not fully committing to it. Um, so yeah, let's jump right into it. So for starters here today, um, we're gonna be tying this guy on a shank, so no need to chop up a uh, perfectly good hook. Um, Fish School makes these guys, these are 35 millimeter shanks. Um, they basically come with a loop. This guy is gonna be sitting into your vise, and uh, this is gonna be the eye right here. So they sit in nice and easy. You don't need any sort of you know, crazy attachment. And also, actually before we get started, I like to kind of save some of this working room here. So this little short section here, uh, we can actually chop that out. So just take a little pair of cutters. Okay, so what it'll look like is basically right there. There's your eye right there. We'll throw this bad mamma jamma in there. Straighten her out. You do kind of want this guy, A, to be, you know, secure, but you do want it pretty flat. We're going to be prying over here, so if it's kind of kilted up a little bit, uh, that's totally fine. And then we're going to do a couple other things. So um, because this fly is kind of, there's a couple components to it. We're not just tying uh, solely on a hook. Um, we kind of need to set the kind of the infrastructure up for it, if you will. Um, so we're gonna be tying in our eyes. We're gonna be tying in some wire. Um, and for the wire, I personally just like, you know, Hairline has this Senyo's uh, large wire. You can use small uh, if you're tying really, really fine stuff. But, you know, I, I tend to just find that most hooks um, have a big enough eyelet um, that you can still make the, the stronger wire work. And, and it is more versatile because it is stronger. So you just kind of have less problems with it. But uh, we're gonna start by basically folding this guy over. And I actually use my teeth, probably shouldn't, but you just basically gotta get this loop to a point. Uh, and we wanna get it to a point because we're gonna basically push it up through the eye of our hook here. And for today's hooks, we're using some Firehole 714s. Um, these guys are pretty good. Um, I chose a size six. You can choose whatever size you like, as long as the wire fits through there, uh, you, won't, you won't have any issues. And push it on up through, like that, okay. Take the hook, and pull it down, okay. So what you're going to notice is, at first, it's going to want to sit like this, and kind of sit all kind of kinked off at the wrong angle, that's okay. Uh, with wire, you can kind of take it and just kind of bend it like that, push it back up and against it, and what you'll find is that hook will then sit nice and straight, and it doesn't sacrifice any of the strength of it, it's still plenty strong. That way, when we tie it in, our hook isn't, you know, sitting at the wrong angle, okay? So now we're ready to actually start tying. Um, for thread, you can use whatever you like. A lot of people like, you know, 70 or 140 denier, Personally, I've been using a lot of nano silk, so this stuff in particular is 18 knot, which seems really fine and, and really, really small, but I find that just because it is strong enough um, and the versatility in it, you can use it for darn near anything. And again, because we're tying this streamer right here, it's kind of nice to have something that bites into it. So we're gonna start by just putting down a thin little base thread layer. Again, you can choose whatever thread you like. Just get a quick little thread layer, okay? And don't also, don't worry about necessarily being perfect with your wraps, you really don't need to. Um, the reality is, is once you've got a good layer and it's sitting on there, it's not gonna be sliding around at all. You can really pry on it a little bit. You can kind of even hoe on it. 
uh, and it shouldn't be going anywhere. Okay, now next up, we take our wire with our hook on it. Okay, and this part, you can choose to make this, you know, as long or as short as you want. There's no right or wrong here. I typically tend to go, you know, a little less than the length of my shank. Some folk really like to, to have it, you know, kind of be longer. So like, some guys will have it back here, some guys will make it really short. I kind of like it roughly, you know, big enough that if I had to, I could probably try and replace this hook. The reality though is, you know, let's be honest, half the time we lose those flies before we ever actually change the hook out, so. But that being said, that's roughly your, your proportions right there, so you can kind of gauge that how you like. Again, it just de this depends on how big you want your fly to be, so just with this guy, it's overall probably two and a half inches, three inches long. Okay, and now that we got this guy nice and straight, like that, you can see the hook sitting nice and in line with everything. We're just gonna tie this guy down. So bring your thread forward and wrap that guy all the way up. Move these guys, get them back up on top. Okay, keep going. Now make sure these are nice snug wraps. The beauty is, is it shouldn't be going anywhere. You don't need super glue. Um, you know, I've, I've talked to a lot of guys who swear when you tie in wire you have to have super glue. I think it's really just a matter of how you actually tie in your wire. So once we're here, I always take the, the remaining tags and actually fold them over, kind of pinch it down like that. And then I just go right back over them. And now once you've got that on there, there's no way the wire is pulling out. It's just not gonna happen. You're, I guarantee you break the wire, you break your tippet, something's gonna break before that wire actually comes all the way out. And okay, just chop that off. Snug that all up. Nick that thread a little bit, but that's okay. It's all getting tied down. Doesn't need to be super pretty. Okay, like that. And lastly, we gotta kinda tie in our eyes. Now you don't have to do this right now, I just like to get the, uh, the foundation of the fly, so kinda the, the skeleton of the fly, if you will, all prepped. So then all we gotta do working forward is just add materials, so. Now these guys, you can use whatever dumbbells you like. Um, if you're trying to lighten up your fly, um, myself included, you know, if I'm fishing shallow water or I'm trying to fish, you know, somewhere where there's a lot of weeds and I can't afford to have my fly dipping and diving too deep into the water column, um, you can use something like bead chain. For today, I'm just using some brass eyes from Hairline. These are the 532nd ones and they seem to basically come out pretty proportionate to the rest of the fly. But again, there's no right or wrong. You can use whatever brand or, or type of dumbbells you like, okay? So now that this guy's tied in, you can always just kind of give it a test. Yeah, it's a little loose, give it a few more wraps. It's just snug everything up. And it's also nice too, you know, tying in the eyes and everything before you actually tie the whole fly and start adding materials. It gives you an idea for proportions. So even with no materials added to this thing, I can already get an idea for like, the actual size of the fly. So when I'm choosing materials, I'm choosing how much bucktail to pull off. I've already got kind of the generalized proportions and I'm like 80, 90% of the way there and then I can kind of just go through and hack, hack whatever I want out, okay? Next step is we need to add in some bucktail. So with bucktail, you know, choose whatever color you like. Um, my two cents is, is I like having stuff that's kind of longer and straighter. That's just me. Um, bucktail does have to have a natural kind of waviness and almost crimpness to it, um, which is actually kind of nice. It, it gives it a kind of a nice natural kind of taper a lot of the time. Um, whereas, you know, some of the synthetics and, and, you know, artificial hairs, they're perfectly straight. They don't really taper. They kind of just, they look perfectly straight. You know, as, as great as fake bucktail is, I uh, don't think it's, it's a true substitute for the real thing, so. But with this stuff, just take it, peel it off like that. You know, it's not crazy. You just pull off a little chunk. If you want it kind of chunky, pull off more. If not, I like to always start adding less because you can always add more. It's harder to 
take that out once you've actually tied the, the whole fly and you've already kind of started building around it, it's hard to kind of hack that stuff back out, okay? So start with a little less. So we'll start with, oh, I don't know. That's a little much. Yeah, that's about right. Okay, so just take it and chop it off right there. Okay, now there's really no need for something like a hair stacker. Um, in fact, I, I personally prefer not to. Um, I like having some of the short fibers in there kind of intermixed with the long ones. You can see you kind of get this already natural taper to not only the fact that these guys are tapering, but the fact that you've got the short intermixed in there, so it kind of gives it the bulkiness up here, and then as it goes out, it gets more sparse. Now, when I'm putting this in, think of this as kind of the back, basically the back half of the fish. Okay, and so when I'm tying this in, I like to cover and expose, or uh, I like to cover and not let this hook be too exposed. So I like kind of giving it a little extra like that, and throw a couple wraps in, and give it a quick check. You can get an idea for the size of your fly. You're like, oh, you know, you can pull it back if you need to shorten it up or add a little length, whatever you like. But for me, that looks about right. And now once it's on there. Just start wrapping it up, okay? And again, don't worry about having these be perfect. They really don't need to be perfect. Uh, the reality is, is all this is gonna get covered here in just a second, so, you know, whatever you get in here, as long as you're firmly attaching the, uh, the hair in there and it's not going anywhere, it doesn't have to be pretty, okay? Okay, so just like that. You're gonna get in here, just kind of pull back like that. And just chop it out. Okay. I like to just cover these guys up a little bit, like so. Work this thread back. And this is where we're actually going to be adding in a little bit of flash. Um, so this stuff, for those of you who have never used it, uh, is I honestly think like the nicest flat braid you're gonna find. Uh, Lagarden makes it. Um, they come in a variety of different colors. Uh, this stuff right here is pearl, uh, but I like it as you can see, it is perfectly flat. Um, there's no loose little fibers in there that are kind of sticking out. Kind of drives me nuts when you're trying to tie with something called flat braid and it's not exactly flat. Uh, so just having something that actually lays perfectly flat, it makes it look really, really clean. Um, and believe it or not, it actually goes, goes pretty far in terms of just cleaning up your fly and making everything look nice. Okay, so for this stuff, super easy. Tie it in, whoop, tie it in like that. Just cover the little tag, like this, okay, perfect. Same thing, don't worry about getting these perfect wraps. We're just trying to tie material in and we're covering all this up, okay? So here's our flop braid. And this is where we start wrapping. Now, you can pack it in there. The reality is there's just really no need. This is just kind of a flashy little underbody that we have in there. Just adds a little, little pop to the bug. Just kind of get their attention. Plus, bait fish tend to be kind of shiny. So it's nice to just add that little bit of an attractor quality to my fly. Okay, and we're all tied down. Cut the remainder out. Okay, so you're coming along, not too bad, not too bad. All right, so next up is we want to add kind of the underbelly. So if this is kind of the meat and potatoes of the fish, we'll have a backup here that'll be made of the chartreuse. But right here, kind of coming off right where, you know, the chin or the belly area here, I kind of want to fill that in. You know, the, the standard original Clouser doesn't, really have it right there. It has it kind of coming off the back, but for me, I like having it kind of come right off the chin. It, again, just kind of plays to that whole proportion game, makes the fly look kind of like a teardrop, like a nice little bait fish as it's scooting through the water. So just like we did before, we're gonna take a little chunk. You can make it fat, you can make it however much you want, play with the proportions. I just like to keep things kind of consistent. So whatever I chose back here is roughly what I'm going to be typically choosing for this belly portion up at the front. Okay. Out a little bit. 
nice so you can see we've got our nice little taper got a good little clump in there you can flip it over or personally I just put it right there right on the bottom snug it up with a couple good wraps like that really cinch that up you can see how it just wants to snug right up in there that's the beauty of tying with this nice good bucktail is once you've got it crimped and in place it really actually kind of likes staying in place so it's it's nice okay okay and we'll clean that guy up like that now you can go up and over and you can try and you know um, gather some of this material up at the head to kind of bulk it up if you really want to I don't think you necessarily need to unless you're kind of worried about this stuff coming out the reality is if you've had those nice good tight wraps snugged right up in there right behind the brat the uh, the dumbbell eyes you usually don't have any issues so I'm just gonna kind of chop this guy right out okay just like that right there Throw a couple more wraps collect any of those loose little tag ends now the last part of this guy is that we want to add our top so now we're talking about really the top half okay um, if there's one place I tend to go a little bit heavier with uh, with my clump of bucktail it's 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 on the top I kind of like having a, a kind of chunkier top half of the fish it's kind of the main part of the fly that the fish is really seeing so I kind of like it to be sticking out uh, and the same fish that's gonna you know be chasing after this thing I think oftentimes is kind of it's not looking for a midge. Let's just say that it's it's hungry. Okay, chop that guy off. And all I'm doing here is I'm just flicking out some of those little tag guys that just end up in there that are so short they're really not even worth it. But once you clean it up, right? You can see it's a little bit heavier of a clump. You can take these two long guys right there, pull them out if you don't want that. And you now we got a nice, tight, clean little patch. Okay. So this guy, we're going to play with this. So I don't typically tie in my bucktail to the extent that it's the same length as the guy in the back. So these, these ends don't meet flush. They actually kind of stop a little bit early with more so like this belly patch down here. We're going to tie that in. And now one thing too before I do this, when I tie in this top half, I really like to kind of actually cross over the eyes and I do that and you'll see here in a second I do that because what it does is it kind of creates this little V and then you've got this kind of natural curvature between the the dumbbells and the, how the hair is getting tied in so that it doesn't splay out necessarily like this it kind of stays more gathered and clumped together so you it stays a little bit tighter you know one thing that's just hard to avoid with any sort of hair like this is because it wants to crimp, it wants to flare, and so when you tie it down with a nice strong small thread in particular, it does tend to kind of flare out like our belly patch here. So when you tie it in, kind of pinch it right there, go up and over and cross, just like as if you were adding those, uh, those cross wraps to tie in those dumbbell eyes, basically do the exact same thing, okay? So tighten that, you can see it's starting to flare up at the front. Boom, 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 boom. All right, and then I finish it by wrapping it up here in the front. Now when I remove my left hand, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. You see how it stayed a little bit more gathered, whereas this stuff down here really flared? I like that. It's just a personal opinion, but I find that it just stays tighter together. It makes my fly look cleaner. So if I'm going through the hassle of tying it, I do want it to be nice and clean. We'll throw a few more of these wraps. Those are my nice little guys like that. And then once we know that that's nice and firmly connected, we can start chopping this stuff out. Okay. Take your time, it doesn't have to be one fluent cut. You can kind of piece it together over time. Oftentimes with a lot of hair like this, it's kind of almost easier if you do want a nice clean 
head to just take your time and start chopping them out little clumps at a time. You can also just go for it, nothing wrong with that. But I tend to just kind of take my time here. Okay. Also a great way to cut your thread is just trying to make one big clean, big clean cut. So clean this up, get the last of these little guys. Like this. So, clean that up a little bit, and then just throw down some more wraps over the front, and we're just trying to clean up those little little ends of the hair, okay? Let's see, we tighten this guy up. I'll oftentimes try and get a nice little kind of cone-ish taper to my thread wraps as I'm doing this too. It's just, again, just the small little things start adding up. Now notice too, you know, and, and this kind of goes back to when we tied in our eyes, um, notice how much of a space I, I gave myself when I made the head. You know, a lot of people put their, you know, their, their whether it be something like a little bead chain or these dumbbells, they put them all the way up at the front and, you know, by the, by the time they start tying their fly and they're already, you know, 80, 90% of the way done, uh, they realize that there's not much room on the head and so then, you know, all the thread just starts getting compiled on and piled on and piled on. If the eyelets are small, it can fall off. Just save yourself the heartache and the pain by just giving yourself a little room. And that way you just don't have to worry about it. Okay, see I could add wraps here literally all day and I'm never, never gonna fill that. Okay, you said, I'm fill it in a little bit. Just adding wraps around just kind of fully building up the head of my fly the way I like it and we're coming down the home stretch okay so now you can use whatever you like you know some some guys like using UV resins I totally get it they're you know they're great they're useful um, they dry clear well at least they should um, I get it. Personally, I'm, I'm a simple person. Uh, I just use Loctite super glue. Works great. Add a tiny little drop here. You don't need much. Okay, nice little drop like that. Throw a couple wraps over the top of that. You can kind of squish it in with your finger a little bit if you like. And then, last but not least, let's just get this guy all whip finished up. Okay. There we go. Voila. You got yourself a plasma minnow. Now again, there's a million and a half variations you can choose to make with this. Um, you know, sometimes I like adding some flashaboo in there. Sometimes if, if I'm feeling uh, kind of adventurous, you know, I'll throw even some peacock or something like it, you know, something to give it a little bit of barring, whatever you feel, some guys will go through and they'll actually take a black sharpie to the, to the bucktail, it takes sharpie really well. You can do whatever you want, you know, but that's basically the meat and potatoes of, uh, of a Stinger Clouser. Have fun with it. Make them in whatever size you like, whatever color you like. You can go salt fishing with them, you can go salmon steelhead fishing with them you can go bass fishing trout fishing it it'll catch a lot of different things so that's about it thanks for joining